Welcome to eKids 2021, Lesson 1, Obedience, The Story of Noah, Saturday 13th of March at 2 p.m. Hi children, it's Uncle Yap and Auntie Chilling again. Hi. We miss all of you very much. Because of COVID-19, we still cannot meet to play, to sing, to dance, and to learn together. But we can do so online. Today, we will start this year's lesson on obedience. It's going to be an interesting lesson so stay tuned and be focused. Before we begin, let me ask Auntie Chiling to start with a prayer. Hi, 小朋友们,让我们一起来做一个开始的祷告。亲爱的天父,我们要感谢你,在过去的日子里,保守我们和家人平安。你是一位,手,运气和爱我们的神。今天是一期是二零二一年的第一堂课，帮助我们从课程里学习。当我们身边有许多的人做不好的事时，我们应该怎么做？让我们从挪亚一家人身上学榜样，不随从这世界的黑暗，选择做对的、做好的事。求你
Hello boys and girls, welcome back to our very first eKids lesson for year 2021. It's been quite some time since we last had our lessons together. I hope all of you all are doing well and fine at home. It is now again storytelling time with me, Uncle Yao Zhong. And for our very first lesson today, we are going to look into the life of a man called Noah and how he demonstrates the value of obedience in his life. As usual, before we start, let's commit the time to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Father, for today, Lord Father, that we can come again, Lord Father, to learn English as well as learn the value of obedience through, through the life of Noah. Lord, we pray that, Lord Father, you grant us understanding, you grant us wisdom, Lord Father. And, and also we pray that, Lord, even as we learn your word and English, we pray that we will have a fun learning session. Lord, we commit this session to your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This year, we are going to do a bit different the way we run the lesson. We are going to start with learning some grammar and vocabulary before we go into the storytelling. And for today's lesson, we are going to learn about the first part of speech, which is called noun. Noun is a word that refers to a place, a thing, or a person. For example, a chair, a house, a tree, or even a person, like for example, Uncle Yao Chong. These are nouns. Now, there are generally two types of nouns. One, it is the tangible noun. If you recall, last year we learned about the, this word tangible. Tangible uh, nouns are things that we can touch and we can see, can feel, and we can smell. These are called tangible nouns. For example, here we see a ball is a tangible noun, a park is a tangible noun, a car, and a human, a person, a friend is a tangible noun because we can see them and we can touch them. Nouns can also be abstract. Abstract nouns are, are nouns or things that we cannot touch and cannot see, but they do exist. Right? For example, concepts and ideas are abstract nouns. Feeling emotion of love is an abstract noun. And also the feeling of happiness, sadness, Grievance, those are nouns. Now, the way we treat noun varies depending on its quantity. Here, I would like to introduce you to the concept of singular 
and plural. Singular nouns refers to a noun where the quantity amounts to only one item, when there is only one thing. When we say plural nouns, basically they refer to that, that the, the things or the items there, there are more than one. Right? In this example here, we see, we take orange for example. Singular, when we say singular noun for an orange, that's only one orange. In the plural context, there are more than one orange. And in this example, we have three oranges. Now, the way we treat nouns depend. The way we treat nouns depends on its quantity, as mentioned earlier, whether it's singular or plural. When there's only one in a singular context, we say there's only one orange. When there are more than one orange, we say there are three oranges. We add an S behind it. Now, generally, when we refer to plural, plural nouns, we generally add, add an S behind the noun, right, to make it plural. Here are some examples. One car, but when there are 10 of them, we say 10 cars. We add an S behind the cars, uh, behind the car. One girl. In a plural context, when there's more than one in, here, in the example here, we have five of them. We say five girls. We add an S behind it. Similarly for boy, in the plural context, we say boys. We add an S behind the boy. And in the and for present, we say that there's only one present, but in the plural context, there are nine presents. We add an S. But that is the way we generally refer to nouns uh, when it is actually plural. I mentioned earlier that we generally add S to the noun to refer to its plural term. But that's not always the case. For nouns ending with S, SH, X or CH, the plural term adds ES behind the noun instead of just AS. For example, bus, which ends with the alphabet S, the plural term of it is buses. We add ES instead of S. Similarly, brush, which ends with SH, the plural term is brushes. Box, which ends with X, also has ES added to the noun when referring to its plural term. Now, for nouns that end with consonant Y, we change the Y or we replace the Y with IES to refer to its plural term. Boys and girls, there are 26 alphabets, right? So A, E, I, O, U. Five out of the 26 alphabets are called vowels, while the remaining 21, which includes Y, as Y is not part of A, E, I, O, U, they are called consonant, right? Now, for words ending with consonant Y, in this case, in this example here is bunny, the plural term of bunny is bunnies. Notice that we replace the Y with I, E, S instead of just adding S or ES. Now for some of the nouns ending with F or FE, we changed F to VES when referring to the plural term. Now note this that we don't do this for all nouns ending with F or FE, only some of them. And the examples here are one calf. Now calf is a young of a calf, right? Uh, a young or a baby calf. Right. So one calf in singular term, the plural term of calf is calves. We replace the F with VES, so seven calves. Similarly, one life. The plural term of life is lives, where we change, where we replace the, the FE with VES. Now for nouns that end with vowel O, the plural term S can we can add S or ES to the plural term. The word potato ends with O, the plural term adds ES behind it, making it potatoes. However, even though piano also ends with a vowel O, 
The plural term of it is pianos, where we add only s instead of es. There are also plural exceptions specific to certain nouns. Which plural term does not follow the general guideline that we have discussed earlier? Here, I've listed some of these irregular plural nouns. Child is a singular term. The plural term for child is children. We don't add s or es to the noun. Instead, we add ren to the noun. Notice also the pronunciation is different. Tooth is a singular term. The plural term of tooth is teeth. We change both the, the, uh, the double O, we replace it with double E. Similarly, foot in, uh, is a singular term and the plural term is feet. Woman, when it's spelled with a letter A, is a singular term. The plural term for woman is women where we replace the A with E. Similarly, men spelled with an A refers to the singular term. But if it is spelled with a letter E, it, it refers to a plural term. Now, there are also nouns where there's no difference when we are, there's no difference in the word when we refer to a plural or a singular term. For example, one sheep. The plural term is also sheep, spelled exactly the same without any addition or any changes to the word. Similarly, fish is another example where the plural term and the singular term are exactly the same word. By now, you realize that there is no standard or single way of treating a noun in its plural term. But I believe, given time, you will be able to get the hang of it as you learn more improving on your vocabulary through reading and lessons. We will look into other aspects of now more in the coming lesson. Before we get into the main story about Noah, I would like to introduce you to a few new words which can help you better understand the story as we read the story later. The first word that I want to introduce to you is the word covenant. Covenant means promise. When a person makes a covenant, a person makes a promise. The next word is pair. When we refer to a pair, we refer it in twos. For example, a pair of socks, a pair of shoes, a pair of pants, a pair of hands. Notice that all these are in twos. Also, when you say that when you queue up uh, in pair, it means that you are queuing up two by two. The next word that you'll see in the story quite a, a fair bit is the word ark. Ark in the story means that it is a big and huge ship. You will also come across the word rebuke later. When somebody rebukes you, somebody is actually scolding you or correcting you. You will also come across the phrase, lost one's mind. When you say that a person has lost his or her mind, you're saying that the person has gone crazy or mad and not doing something that is sensible. And you also come across this term, raining cats and dogs. Now, this does not mean that the sky is raining literally cats and dogs, but what it means is that it's raining heavily. When we are saying that it's raining, uh, it's raining cats and dogs outside, what we mean is that it's raining very heavily outside. Yeah. And lastly, is the word obedience. Or in Chinese, it's fu chong which is also the value that we are going to look into in more detail in today's storytelling in the life of Noah. Now, when a person is obedient, you will listen and follow the instructions of another person. For example, if you're obedient towards your daddy and mommy, you will listen to them and also you will follow 
their instruction as well as their advice. Now, why do you do so? Because we trust them and we love them. Now that you've got a better hang of all these uh, new words, let's go into our story for today. So the story, as mentioned earlier, is about the life of Noah and the Great Flood. This is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9, uh, to chapter 9, verse 17. Shall we read the story together? Let's read the story together, yeah? So long, long ago, there was a time when the people on earth were evil, doing all the bad things which displeases God. In all of the world, there was only one man and his family who were righteous and pleases God. That man was Noah. His faithfulness caused him to find favor in the sight of the Lord. One day, God told Noah to go and warn the sinful people of the world that unless they live differently, they were going to be punished. When Noah told the people what God said, they just laughed at Noah. Noah rebuked the people. Noah knew that God was with him, so he spoke out bravely and earnestly. But the people did not care and continued doing bad things. That displeases God. One day, Noah heard God say that the time has come to punish all the people on earth, except for Noah and his family. An ark was to be built, and God had told Noah exactly how to build it. Noah and his sons believed in God. They immediately worked on building the ark as told by God. People laughed and said that Noah had lost his mind for building the huge ark on dry land. Noah warned the people of the big flood that is coming and asked them to turn from their evil ways. The people did not want to listen to Noah and continue their bad ways. But the day finally came when the ark was completed. Then Noah set about doing the other things God had told him to do. The pairs of all the different kinds of animals were taken into the ark. Food and other supplies were brought aboard, enough to last for a long, long time. When all of this was done, Noah, his sons, and their wives all went into the ark. The other people continued to laugh at Noah and his family when they shut the door of the ark. The days went by. One, two, three, Four. All this time, Noah and his family simply waited on the Lord. Five days went by, then six, and still nothing happened. On that seventh day, the things that Noah warned the people about for 120 years came to pass. 
it started raining cats and dogs. The people were caught by surprise when the flood came and took them away. It rained non-stop for 40 days and 40 nights. The flood water level rose above the roofs of houses as it continuously rained. When it had finally stopped raining, the water was higher than the top of the highest mountain. The people and the animals outside the ark had drowned. Week after week went by, even months, and the water level remained high upon the earth. Then one day, God made a wind to pass over the earth. The waters began to go down and the ark began to settle somewhere high above the mountains of Ararat. Not long after that, Noah sent out a raven and a dove to check if the flood water level has dropped. The dove returned and Noah knew that the waters were not yet gone. Seven days went by and Noah sent out the dove the second time. This time, she returned with an olive twig. The waters were going down. Soon, God told Noah to take his family and all the living things to leave the ark and to live once more upon the earth. Noah and his family were thankful to God for saving them. And God was pleased with their faith and their thanksgiving. God set a rainbow in the clouds as the covenant that never again would he destroy earth with a flood. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story. Let us now recap our understanding of nouns based on the story that we've read earlier. A noun is a word that refers to a place, a thing, or a person. I'm going to flash through a few sentences based on the story that we've read earlier. And boys and girls, can you help me identify which part, which of the words within the sentence are nouns? First sentence is, let's read together. Noah obeyed and built a huge ark. Is Noah a noun? Yes, it is a noun because Noah, we are referring to a person. The next word is obeyed. Is obeyed a noun? No, obeyed is not a noun. What about the word end? Is end a noun? Does it refer to a place, a thing, or a person? No, end is not a noun. What about built? Built is also not a noun because it does not refer to a place, a thing, or a person. What about the word a? Uh? No, it is not. What about huge? It is not either. What about arc? Does arc refer to a place, a thing, or a person? Yes, it does. An arc refers to a thing. Hence, an arc is a noun. The next sentence is, Let's read together. The ark landed on Mount Ararat. So boys and girls, using the same way that we identified nouns in the earlier sentence, can you try to identify nouns within this sentence? 
Yes, the first one obviously is arc. It is a repeat. Arc in the earlier sentence was a, is a noun. Arc in this sentence is also a noun because it refers to a huge boat. Uh, it refers to a boat. Can you find the second noun within the sentence? Yes, Mount Ararat is also a noun because Mount Ararat refers to a place. The next sentence is. A pigeon and a raven were sent out. There are two nouns in this sentence. Boys and girls, can you help me identify those two nouns? Yes, the pigeon as well as the raven, both of them are nouns. Pigeon and ravens are birds, so hence they are, they, they are a type of thing in, in, in a way. Yeah? Hence, both of them are nouns. In the last sentence, finally, is a rainbow was set as a covenant. Can you all identify which of these words within this sentence is a noun? Yes, the first one is, a, is rainbow as it refers to a thing. A rainbow is a thing, hence rainbow is a noun. Now, can you identify the second noun within the sentence? You recall what covenant is? Covenant is a promise, right? And it is also a noun because it refers to a thing. But this is unlike the nouns that we 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 refer we were talking about earlier because covenant, a promise, this is even though it's a thing, this is an abstract noun because we can't really touch, feel, or smell. Uh, we can't really apply our senses to identify this particular uh, thing. Hence. Covenant is a thing, is a noun, but it is an abstract noun. So what have we learned from the story? Number one, God told Noah to do something weird and difficult. Remember, the people were laughing at Noah, saying that why is he building such a huge ark, or such a huge ship on dry lands, dry grounds? When it is not raining and there's no water, isn't that weird? A ship is supposed to be set in the sea. But there were, it was not in the sea, it was built on dry lands. And it was something very strange and very weird. That's why people were laughing at Noah. But did Noah disobey God just because the people were laughing at him? And, and even or, 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 or because this, the, the thing that God asked was weird to normal humans been thinking. Well, Noah did not. Noah trusted God and did as he was told, even though he was laughed and ridiculed and mocked by the people. And because of that, because of his trust, was God, Noah and his family were saved because of his obedience. From the lesson, we can we also see that God punishes people who are disobedient. But at the same time, as he punished them, it actually saddens him a lot when he punished those people because he loves them just as he loves us. That is why God sent Jesus down to earth, that through Jesus, God made a way for us to be forgiven and rescued, despite our disobedience. Boys and girls, Understand that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And God knows and his thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. What it means is that God knows a lot more. God knows better. God knows the future. And know this, that God loves us and wants the best for us. And because of that, children, we can trust him. And when we trust and obey God, 
he will protect us and his favor and blessings will be upon us. Even though at times God may ask us to do something that we might not understand. But know this that God has good plans for you. And as we trust and obey and act on his word and his command, things will turn out. Boys and girls, apart from being obedient towards God, we too need to remember to be obedient towards our parents. Do we listen to daddy and mommy even when they ask us to do things that we don't understand why? We need to listen to them and be obedient to them. Know that they know, better, they know more than us, they love us and they want the best for us. And obeying them will be for our own good. Let me give you an example. When we were young, we do not know the danger of fire. And we, we might be curious, right, when we see fire and we would actually want to actually go near it and then probably play, touch it or play with it. And at that time, daddy and mommy will stop us saying that, no, don't go near fire. We might not understand why they do so because we do not know the danger of fire. But know that daddy and mommy knows the danger of fire and that asking us not to do so is for our own safety and for our own good because they care for us and they do not want us to get hurt. So remember boys and girls that we need to obey and listen to daddy and mommy as well. Ephesians 6 verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents, for this is the right thing to do. So boys and girls, remember the importance of obedience towards God, towards our parents. We need to listen to them. Uh, we, need to, we need to listen to them and know and trust them because they know what is best for us. And we need to be obedient towards them. And continue to develop this uh, this value of obedience in our lives. Yeah. This week's memory verse is taken from Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. Boys and girls, shall we read this together? Ready? One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. What it means is that trust in the Lord wholeheartedly. Believe that he is in control, that he wants the best for you. And do not just rely on our own intellect and our wisdom, thinking that we know better than God. But in everything that we do, seek God, and he will make sure that things will turn out well and right. So shall we try memorizing this memory verse together? Let's read it again, yeah? Ready? One, two, three, go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3 verse five and six. Now I'll try to remove some words and let's recite it together. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Very good. Now, with more words removed. Let's try it together, yeah? Ready? One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Very well. Now with even more words removed. 
Are you ready? Let's try. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Very well. Now, with all the words removed, I know it is a bit long, but I know you can do it. Yeah? Ready? One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Very well done. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and you've learned the importance of obedience. Know that God loves you, that he wants the best for you, and we should obey him, just like how Noah obeyed him. And because of Noah's obedience, God led him through the flood, and the whole family was saved. Before we end, shall we commit ourselves to the Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Father, for today's lesson on obedience. Lord, we thank you. We know, Lord Father, that, it, that you love us. And when we disobey you, Lord Father, it saddens you. And thank you, Lord Father, for sending Jesus, Lord, to, 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 to die on the cross, Lord Father, for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we pray that, Lord Father, you will continue, Lord Father, to remember the importance of being obedient. And that, Lord, we will continue, Lord Father, to trust in you and know that, Lord, you want the best for us and we will continue. And, Lord, we pray that, Lord, you put in our hearts, Lord Father, that we, that we will be firm, Lord Father, and continue to be obedient towards you. Not only that, we also pray that, Lord Father, you continue, you continue Lord Father, to help us, Lord Father, more our characters, Lord Father, better. And that, Lord Father, we too will always remember to be obedient towards our daddy and our mommy but thank you lord father once again lord father for this lesson of father um, that we can learn new grammar word, uh, learn new grammar learn new words as well as learn of father the value of being obedient we commit ourselves to you and in the weeks to come lord father we ask that lord you be with us and then you continue to guide us in our lives thank you lord father once again for everything we commit ourselves to you in jesus name we pray Amen. I hope you have enjoyed the story of Noah and the lesson on obedience and nouns. I'll see you again in the next lesson. Till then, take care, stay safe, and bye-bye. We are so happy to see you. I hope that you are doing well. And today, we are going to make a dough. Here are the materials we are going to use to make the car. This will be for wings and the tail, the body of the dove, lower part of the body, the green color will be the, for the leaf, and then for the eyes. So now, we want to cut the body of the dove. Follow the outline here. Then, lower part of the body. Then, the leaf.
For the leaf, you need to cut the notches at the edge of the leaf. And then the eyes. Now we want to make the beak. Use the remaining pepper. And fold it into half. Cut at the edge of the pepper to make the beak. The body of the door, you fold into half. Then, cut a slate about 1 cm. So now, we want to assemble them together. Use the glue to stick on it. Turn to the other side. Attach the bit at the head of the door. And then the leaf. And then the eyes Now, we are going to make the wings and the tails. Use the size of the thumb to measure the size of the wing. Fold it up. Then, turn to the other side. And repeat the same step until the end.
then fold the wings into half. Now, cut the both sides of the wing over shape. Now, same step as above, you do it for the tail. Use the thumb to measure the size of the tail. And fold it until the end. For the tail, you only cut one side over shape. Now, we want to slide the wings through the slit. Then, attach the tail at the back. and staple it. Now, we want to draw the eyes. So, the Bible verse for today is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 Trust in the Lord with all your heart on the top of the wings you can write obedience and noah So now we can open up the wings. So this is the craft for today. Isn't it beautiful? I hope you like it. Hi, 小朋友们。从今天的课程里,我们学习到 挪亚一家在一个充满黑暗、罪恶的时代，选择与神同行。
听从神的话。当挪亚遵循神的话，造方舟时，他虽然遭受许多不信的人的嘲笑，却勇敢、坚定跟随神。神在所定的日子，成就了他所说的话。挪亚一家也在洪水来到时，没有被水淹死，全家得救。我们也选择。在今天，相信主耶稣，让我们能够得到救恩的喜乐，心里的平安。我们现在请安哥亚来为我们做一个结束的祷告。Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for today that we have learned about obedience through the story of Noah. Lord, I commit all our Ikit's children and Their families unto you, and ask that Lord you continue to watch over them, protect them, especially from COVID nineteen. A lot we love all these children, but we know you love them much more. So Lord, bless them, take good care of them, and protect them until we see them again at our next e kids lesson. Thank you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Bye bye. bye. See, you See you again, again. next lesson.